Hello everybody and welcome to this part where we talk about the hormones that are involved in causing muscle hypertrophy when we perform resistance training. So th th there's two main hormones where there is enough experimental evidence to suggest that resistance training causes uh, some alterations or increases in these hormones. The first is, um, and I've put here hypertrophy is mediated by the first one which is insulin-like growth factor. Uh, it's called insulin-like growth factor because it's uh, got a very similar chemical structure to um, insulin, the, the hormone insulin which controls our blood glucose levels. Um, now generally insulin-like growth factor is or if we actually call it, it has a number of different variants, okay? So IGF-1 is the one that we're interested in in terms of uh, hypertrophy. Now, what happens with insulin-like growth factor is that it's actually found in satellite cells, okay? It's found in the myofibers, and importantly, it's found in Schwann cells as well, okay? Now, if anybody remembers what Schwann cells are, well, the Schwann cells are actually located on our nerves and they are involved in the transmission of electrical impulses uh, to uh, different parts of the body, different organs, particularly the muscle. Okay, so uh, having an increase in Schwann cells uh, will cause a, a better conduction of the electrical signal to the muscle uh, and when you get a summation of those electrical signals then you're going to have a much stronger uh, muscle contraction because more motor units will be uh, recruited. Um, so insulin like growth factor is, is present in satellite cells, uh, in my fibers and Schwann cells um, and also it actually causes the activation of these cells, okay? The activation and differentiation of satellite cells. Okay, so insulin-like growth factor is extremely important. Now it's elevated, uh, sorry, one other thing that's important to say is that uh, once it becomes elevated and activated, IGF-1 actually converts into something called mechano growth factor, okay? Mechano growth factor, or MGF. Now MGF increases protein synthesis, okay? So MGF, MGF sorry, uh, increases protein synthesis uh, and that obviously means that you get more amino acids mobilized to uh, the muscle fiber particularly when it's been damaged from the resistance training so you get an increase in uh, protein synthesis and it's raised it's increased for about 72 hours after exercise so once you've had, so, you, so 72 hours after exercise is when the um, insulin-like growth factor or mechano growth factor is, is increased for, okay? So this basically means that you don't need to have your, uh, your increase in protein straight after exercise. So some people you see that they, when they're in the gym, as soon as they finish this session, they won't even have a shower, they'll go and have their protein shake or whatever, um, but you actually don't need to because the hormones which are responsible for increasing protein synthesis and for mobilizing uh, the uh, satellite cells will remain in uh, uh, within the muscle tissue in the site of injury for up to 72 hours. So that process where you have protein synthesis occurring happens during recovery, mainly when you sleep. Okay, mainly when you're resting, when you sleep, uh, it happens when you have recovery days from training. It doesn't happen 10 minutes after you've finished your exercise session. So that's something to bear in mind for all of the people that rush to, to try and get the protein into their body straight away. It, it's not necessary to do that because from a biological perspective, uh, these hormones are raised for some time after the exercise. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So insulin-like growth factor, there's a large spike in insulin-like growth factor and of course the mechano growth factor as well when you perform resistance training. Um, so it's extremely important important uh, hormone. Now, we also have another hormone, so we we'll just cross this off and put in hormone number two, which is testosterone, okay? So testosterone, which is um, released from the Leydig cells 
in uh, the testes, okay, um, in the testes, increases by a large amount when you perform resistance training. Now, testosterone can actually stimulate growth hormone, okay? Now, growth hormone is actually involved in, um, you, well, basically metabolizing triglycerides, so you lose uh, body fat, uh, and it's also involved in um, causing uh, uh, protein synthesis and mobilization of uh, satellite cells to form new myofibers. Uh, the evidence for growth hormone is still in its early days. There's a lot of research that's being done, uh, you know, with uh, the effects of growth hormone following resistance training. Uh, just interestingly, growth hormone is actually released when we sleep. Large amounts of growth hormone are actually released from the pituitary gland in the brain um, uh, whilst we sleep, uh, and then it has these systemic effects. Uh, one of the other things that growth hormone actually does while we're on the subject is it increases the um, uh, the conversion of IGF-1 into mechano growth factor, okay? Uh, so remember we talked about the mechano growth factor being extremely important for muscle growth. Well, growth hormone actually, uh, there is a, uh, some evidence to suggest that there is a pathway where uh, growth hormone increases IGF to um, uh, mechano growth factor and then you get those uh, uh, increased uh, protein synthesis. So, Going back to testosterone, testosterone is released by the Leydig cells. Now, importantly, testosterone is also causes muscle building, okay? It increases protein synthesis. It allows uh, amino acids to be mobilized to produce more sarcomeres and make uh, a stronger muscle. Now, one thing that's important with testosterone is that studies have actually shown that it's exercises which have multiple sets which re result in the largest uh, uh, increase in testosterone. So what I'm saying here is that there, I think there was a study done uh, back in the, uh, the 1990s that looked at squats okay and how many how many sets you perform and generally what they found was that four uh, uh, or more four or more sets were actually necessary to increase the amount of testosterone in the body so that it has uh, a, a, a kind of anabolic effect, okay? So that was extremely important. I will actually put a link to the research paper in the, uh, the uh, description of this video below so you can actually read the paper for yourself. But essentially, the more sets you do on the, the larger exercises, so squats, uh, uh, deadlifts, um, the greater you're going to have uh, an increase in your testosterone levels. And of course, you're gonna have a greater uh, effect within the body. Now, why is it important to increase the hormone levels? Because when you increase hormones, increase hormones, whether it's testosterone or it's insulin-like growth factor, will mean, will equal increased receptor interactions. So the receptors for these hormones are present throughout the body. Uh, and within the, muscle, within the muscle tissue, the muscle cells as well. So if you have an increased amount of the hormone, more of it will bind to these receptors and you'll get a greater effect. And this is why it's important with resistance training to increase uh, the, the, the training load uh, progressively. Um, and in this way, you're increasing the hormones uh, and then you're getting that increase in the uh, activation of the satellite cells and um, the, the myofibers. When you start to do a period of resistance training you're also going to get an increase not only in in the muscle fiber but also in the tendon as well okay so obviously you've got like a, a, a increased collagen fibers which are being deposited um, within within the tendons and remember the tendons are transmitting the force produced by the muscle to the bone to cause the movement So obviously it's quite natural for the tendons to have an increased deposition of collagen So that um, the tendons can adapt with the increase in uh, the force that the muscle fiber is producing So you have an increase in collagen fibers the extracellular matrix Okay, the part around uh, uh, the, the muscle fibers uh, also expands as well. So you have an increase in the extracellular matrix. Okay, and that can actually contribute also to hypertrophy. So 
the, uh, the increase in extracellular matrix also contributes to an increase in the muscle size. It's not just all about adding sarcomeres in, in parallel. There is an increase in the extracellular matrix. And of course, the other thing that happens is that you have uh, an increase in bone mineral density as well, BMD, because the force that's being transmitted to the bone causes the bone to adapt to that stress. Uh, and so you have a greater bone mineral density reserves, which is why resistance training when uh, you're in your early 20s, uh, or even in your late teens, it's quite good to do with safe loads, not excessive loads, because the resistance training will actually help you get a higher peak bone mineral density when you hit your mid-20s. And from that point, it starts to go steadily down as you get uh, older. So these are some of the main um, mechanisms related to muscle hypertrophy. I hope that these videos have been uh, interesting and informative. I very much value and look forward to your comments. Uh, so please do feel free to leave them and I'll hope to see you again on another video very soon. Thank you very much.